The human brain has shrunk dramatically throughout the history of mankind. Scientists are in some disagreement as to whether this aggressive shrinkage started 30,000 years ago or 10,000 years ago, but they agree that the brain has shrunk by 8 to 10 percent. Before this, it's been theorized that the brain has in fact been constantly shrinking at a much slower rate, as far back as 100,000 years. One of the more puzzling questions for evolutionary biologists is why did the human brain evolve to be so big in the first place? It consumes up an extraordinary amount of energy. It only takes up 2% of our body weight, but uses 20 to 25% of our energy intake, far more than any other organ. The more the brain grows, the more energy and nutrients it takes away from other vital organs. The necessity for such a large brain in evolutionary terms was thrown into doubt by Professor John Lorber's study detailing individuals who somehow managed to function normally with an IQ over 100 with nothing more than a sliver of brain tissue. One boy had an IQ of 126 and an honors degree in mathematics, despite the fact he had virtually no brain. A CAT scan showed the boy's skull was lined with a thin layer of brain cells, barely a millimeter in thickness. The rest of his skull was filled with cerebrospinal fluid. This young man continued a normal life with virtually no brain. From over 600 scans of people with this condition, called hydrocephus, Lower documented just under 10% of this group had 95% of the cranial cavity filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Half of this group was profoundly mentally handicapped. The remaining half had IQs greater than 100. Skeptics have claimed that it was an error of interpretation of the scans themselves. Lorber even himself admitted that reading a CAT scan can be tricky. However, despite this, he also had said that he would not make such a claim without evidence. In answers to attacks that he has not precisely measured the amount of brain tissue missing, he added, I can't say whether the mathematics student has a brain weighing 50 grams or 150 grams, but it is clear that it is nowhere near the normal one and a half kilograms. Why did the human brain grow to be so unnecessarily large in terms of our evolutionary survival and progress? And why did it suddenly start to shrink so dramatically 30,000 years ago? If the size of the brain is a sign of the evolutionary progress of an organism, does that mean we are now de-evolving? In the book The Song of the Greys, author Nigel Kerner, long before the affirmation of shrinking brain size, made a stunning case for the suggestion that we did not evolve from simple organisms, but rather de-evolved from something much, much better than we are now. The large brain is just a remnant of what we once were. That's why it's shrinking. Kerner also suggests that the 95% of the human genome that does not seem to code for proteins was at one time in the ancient past used in full. In other words, we have lost 95% of our potential through the evolution. Kerner also insists in the book that human lineage includes a Neanderthal input. It has long been believed from research in mitochondrial DNA that this was impossible, as Neanderthals had evolved concurrently with Homo sapiens. But research published in 2007 has suggested that Neanderthals may well have contributed to the human gene pool after all. In Kerner's theory, he suggests that the difference between us and less evolved animals is freedom of scope, the freedom to know, be aware of, and make a vast range of choices outside the status quo. Based on this premise, if we are devolving, we had more freedom of scope in the past. If you trace that right back to our beginnings, we would have been perfectly free with no limits. Kerner asserts that this freedom could be called God. But the extraordinary difference is that we made our own free choice to understand what it might be like not to be perfectly free. We choose to experience the one thing we couldn't experience 
from the state of perfect freedom. Limit. If omnipotence is all-knowing, says Kerner, then the knowledge would have to include a knowledge of what it's like to not know all. From this, Kerner conceptualized that humankind in the past was a less hardwired, more ephemeral sort of being that gradually devolved into a more and more physical type, through the actions of the second law of thermodynamics, with time, to a point where we became a sort of monkey man.